Jaira, thank you so much for being with us today. So first of all, tell me how you feel. Um, I'm, I'm like most Lebanese people at this moment. Um, I feel angry. Uh, I feel, um, in, in a way, I feel helpless. Um, I feel that uh, I myself, uh, who is a dual citizen, British and Lebanese, uh, I feel that I was, I was left, uh, you know, I was, I was uh, basically abandoned by the, the people, by the, um, you know, the, the ruling class who uh, were supposed to be looking after its citizens. Um, it, it's, there is, there's a, a sense of um, um, despair among the Lebanese. There's a sense uh, that I felt, uh, you know, just running from one hospital to another uh, to find, uh, you know, a, a place to basically for, for a doctor to amend my, my face injuries um, that was took place, um, you know, um, because of the explosion of the, bl of the blast. Um, there's, there's a sense that this whole resilience that we've, we've been always known for as Lebanese people is now kind of like diminishing. It's, um, you know, I, I've said before, it's something too hard to endure. Um, it, it's something that we haven't witnessed um, before. Um, I've lived through the civil war in this country. I covered, um, you know, Israeli attacks on Lebanon um, throughout the 90s. I haven't seen uh, such destruction and, and impact on people's lives and properties as I've seen in, on Tuesday. Tell me where you were during the explosion, what you saw, what you experienced. I was sitting with my friends having a glass of wine in um, the hotel uh, garden area, um, you know, by the pool. And um, we've, we've received a, a, a photo from a friend of us on WhatsApp group uh, uh, who's in London uh, about, an, about a, an, an another, an explosion in the port of Beirut. And we, we just looked at the picture and we just immediately went to check the news and, and we, we were just texting him and, you know, we texted him and we told him that there's nothing on the news about it. Maybe it's it's fake photo. Um, and then, you know, a few minutes after that, we've we've it felt like as if it's an earthquake. But because we've received that photo before, we knew there was something like probably it's an explosion. But we thought it's actually far from us because all the, all what we could feel is that the, the ground was just shaking and that the you know the whole building the place we we were sitting in shaked and it, it literally it was few seconds after that when we heard the the boom and and mostly what we heard is the shattered glass and you know we just heard the shattered glass and 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 as you know for me. I just, I was sitting at a table and a, a board of glass just fell on my back. Uh, and that basically meant that my, my face hit the table, uh, broke the glass of wine in front of me, which caused the injuries in my face. You mentioned people are angry, they're in despair. I mean, what they're saying about the official explanation as to what the explosion may be about. We, we can't really, there's so many speculations now about what happened. The, for, for me, the most reasonable um, um, reason for, for this whole destruction is, is negligence, negl negligence by, by the uh, you know, ruling class. Um, it's um, it, the, basically the reason is corruption. Uh, you know, it's it's a huge neglect on behalf of, of those people who were supposed to be looking after us. It's neglect of health, health and safety rules. Um, I think no matter what the reason for the explosion is, those who are responsible for this are those people who basically did not take into consideration the health and safety measurements and rules on how to, you know, store such an explosive material. And in the first place, why would they actually be storing this type of explosive material in a very, um, you know, um, 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 essential port of life for the whole country, not just for the city, in such, uh, in such a neglig negligent way? 
data you were mentioning, of course, Lebanon has suffered other other crises before. It was in the middle of, of a financial crisis already. How this explosion worsened the whole situation? The the economy prior to this explosion, uh, you know, we, we all know, all all analysts were talking about a collapsed economy. I kept, you know, referring to um, a failed state, basically, and the Lebanese are aware that it's a failed state. Uh, and this has come to add to the reality that we actually live, you know, the Lebanese live in a failed state, in a collapsed economy. The prices, the devaluation of, of, the, of the lira towards the, the US dollar has actually went uh, into, you know, it's become erratic. No one was able to control it. The people lost trust in the banking system, which was the praise of this country, uh, you know, for, for, for several months now. Um, the people have already been, uh, you know, suffering and, and kind of like uh, um, uh, living the, the aftermath of, of a collapsed economy. So this now has come to basically say to them that, yeah, there's, there's no, there's, you know, you, you're not going to survive. This was what they call the straw that actually brought them to the despair. And the port was a very important point of um, food imports. Now it's completely devastated. How is this going to impact the food security of the country? Have you seen prices going up already? Um, prices are already up. So I think in the in the last two days, people were just shocked. So nothing has, has changed so far. And also it, it played well that officials have been, uh, you know, telling the public that we have, um, you know, enough storage of food and wheat uh, in the country and that now they have actually, there are plans to transfer import uh, to other ports in Lebanon, like uh, the port of Tripoli in North Lebanon and the port of, of Saidun and Tyr in South Lebanon, and that these ports can, you know, manage to, um, you know, receive and, and, and conduct the same type of, of import that uh, uh, Beirut per, uh, port was, was responsible for. So as far as we, we can, you know, get from the official sources, they are telling us that we, we're not yet in a, in a position where we, we have this uh, emergency, emergency so, uh, shortage of food. It's a, it's a positive note for now. Yes. But, but the point that we also we, we need to consider is not the importing um, uh, you know aspect of it. We now have in Beirut around 250,000 homeless people, those people who had their houses and flats destroyed during the, the blast. Those people need need emergency food supply. And the government has not put plans to actually supply emergency uh, food packages to these people. So, so the people, the homeless people now are mainly dependent on the voluntary sector, on the, um, um, you know, on, on, the, on other Lebanese, uh, you know, public to uh, organize themselves and help out their fellow Lebanese in this crisis. And what are their reactions? Aira, you are there on location. How are people reacting? How are they coping with it? Um, it's, you know, you could, as I said, there's, there's lots of despair, but, but you can feel that, that people are actually, you know, jumping to help each other. Uh, it, it happened during, you know, just uh, moments after the, the explosion where, you know, I was heading to the hospital. My friends were taking me to, to the hospital, um, you know, it was people just on the streets uh, wishing me well. You know, I was I was actually walking, you know, we were walking down one of the streets and there were other people with blood on their faces also trying to find a hospital to to cater for them. You know, at one point, um, you know, a woman on, on a motorcycle stopped and asked me, you know, if I if I want a transfer, uh, you know, a transport uh, um, uh, to, to, to a nearby hospital. And I said, yes, she put me on her motorbike and she took me to the what she believed was the nearest hospital that was actually taking, um, you know, um, cases because three of the hospitals that we, we visited uh, before were not able to, to take new cases because they were overwhelmed with, with, uh, with cases of, of injured people. So, you know, th there were really solidarity among the people in, in this, um, in, in the, um, you know, aftermath, the direct aftermath. And I think that type of solidarity stayed on 
um, you know, after um, um, on yesterday and today, uh, people from other parts of Lebanon, um, you know, um, announced that they are opening their homes for the homeless people to come and stay with them. As I said, there were voluntary committees that were organized, uh, and and those those uh, you know uh, uh, voluntary people, those volunteers were uh, you know coming together and and kind of like organizing themselves to do different missions in the city. Some uh, dedicated their work to distribute food to the homeless. Some actually were were helping in cleaning the aftermath. Um, you know, it's, it's somewhere actually trying to get medication. There are also people helping other people, you know, uh, uh, finding their missing loved ones because we, we don't really have now a proper count of those who are missing uh, because of the explosion yet. Are your friends safe? Yes. Thanks. You know, it's um, I'm, I'm lucky in that kind of, of respect. So when we talk about solidarity, how can a country like Switzerland, full of humanitarian organizations, can help? Um, one thing I would say, and I have you know, seen throughout the city, uh, is that the Lebanese people are asking the uh, international community basically not to give money to the Lebanese government. It's as simple as that, because the people don't trust the establishment anymore. People don't trust their rulers. People don't trust the state. It's it's that you know we got to that kind that level of of um, um, you know mistrust in in how how the ruling uh, class have been actually running this country for the last thirty years. So so the people most of the people are asking the international community to try and donate to charities. Um, you know, the, the Lebanese Red Cross has been doing uh, an amazing job with, with the homeless, with, with you know, um, um, uh, donating, um, um, it was a center for donating blood, but they're also helping with setting tents for the homeless, providing them with food. Um, and there are other charities in, in this country that, that direct help can, get, can go to. Uh, but, but what the Lebanese are asking for is basically and I don't want to generalize, so most Lebanese are asking for, is basically not to give money directly to the Lebanese ruling class. And how politically damaging is this situation now for the government? It's, it's very politically damaging in the sense that um, it, it's a government that we shouldn't actually blame it for everything that has been happening in this country because it's only one year old. But... Um, even in that year, they were not able to detect they were, you know, the fact that there was negligence in storing this type of material. Apparently, it felt like they were not aware that that type of material has been stored in the port to a certain extent. So that there's, there's this kind of like element of, you know, it's if, if there was a, 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 an element of, of mistrust in the whole ruling class in this country, um, the the uh, mistrust is is even bigger now with this government uh, because they've been there for one year and they were not able to um, make any kind of like improvement uh, towards mainly towards the economy um, towards the fact that they came on with with a prospect that they're going to be saving the collapsed economy. Uh, the collapsed financial um, uh, situation in Lebanon, but they, they failed miserably in, in doing that. And you already mentioned the homeless uh, problem. What other big risks do you think can, can come out from this situation? I mean, we have coronavirus crisis already. Yes. So this is another, another open kind of like wound now because coronavirus was on the rise in Lebanon and the government has um, last week has issued a, a double partial lockdown in the country. Um, so they did it for five days last week and this week uh, they, they opened it up Tuesday and Wednesday. So the, the explosion took place on Tuesday, basically, when it was the first day uh, where the country is going to opening up to open after a partial lockdown. And the, uh, the um, second partial lockdown was supposed to start today 
but you go out in the city, there's, there's no one now cares about a corona lockdown, even though, and, and also, you know, when I was in the emergency uh, room in, in the hospital, one thing that came to my mind with all these people, you know, pouring into the emergency room is the fact that what about coronavirus? But definitely at that time, no one was actually thinking of coronavirus. No one cared about coronavirus. There's a story that has been, I'm not sure if it is actually, you know, I couldn't verify it, but there's a story on social media now about a, um, um, a rescuer who rushed to, you know, carry a, a, an injured woman. And she told him, you know, don't, don't come near me. I have coronavirus. And he said to her, I don't care. I will not leave you to die. So he carried her and, and you know, and, and took her to hospital. I think this is, this is the, you know, when I said there's no more resilience, but the, the humanity resilience within the Lebanese people is still there. And, and, and basically, the, I think the Lebanese people now feel that they only have each other and, and they, they, they cannot count on, they, they feel that they're left alone, basically. So all, all that they have is each other. And how long do you think this will take to recover? No one knows. It depends on the type of plans. It depends on, you know, uh, what is going to happen next. It depends on the amount of aid that Lebanon is going to receive. Where is this aid going to uh, to come to? You know, how it's going to be spent? Who is going to be responsible for the reconstruction? There are so many questions now. One thing that, for instance, the Lebanese, um, and you hear lots of Lebanese talking about is, you know, instead of, of, of um, 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 uh, sympathizing, you know, as a ruling class, sympathizing with, with the citizens, why don't you tell the banks to release our savings? You know, you know, we have destroyed homes, we have savings in the banks, we can actually use them to restore our, our houses, our flats. But that money is being kept, is being detained, is being basically, you know, um, 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 stopped from from reaching um, um, its owners. Um, you know, those people who who actually put their life savings in the banks cannot now access them. So yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. I wish you the best with your recovery. Thank you. Mm -hmm.